Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It's been a while, and right now, as we speak, I am crossing the border into the overseas British territory of Gibraltar, and the border is one of the strangest ones I've ever seen. We're literally on a landing strip right now, and today we're gonna be exploring this place. It is quite the geopolitical anomaly, so let's go on adventure in the British overseas territory, some would say the last colony of Europe, Gibraltar. Vamos. Gibraltar is a British overseas territory in the far south of the Iberian Peninsula bordering Spain. Gibraltar is also commonly known as the Rock and it was captured in 1704 by the Brits during the Spanish War of Succession and Spain formally ceded it to Great Britain with the signing of the Treaty of Utrecht in 1713. And the rest is history. This is by far the most interesting place that I've visited in my life and you're not going to want to miss what I share in this video because I have yet to see a video like this in English, so let's go! Holy moly, you guys, check out the gas prices here. 120 for a liter, 140. Now these are in pounds, of course. But in Spain, I just looked at gas prices and it was right around one euro 70 cents per liter in Malaga at least. So you can already see the difference in prices here. Oh my God, you guys, check this out. This is one of the coolest football fields I've ever seen. Gibraltar even has a national team. They're qualified in the European League and FIFA granted, they do not win a lot of games. Obviously a very small team. And right behind it, you have the airport and the airstrip. So imagine you're a huge fan of football and aviation. This is like the go-to place for you. You gotta come to Gibraltar. You gotta move here, become a Gibraltar citizen. Check it out. Wow, and the rock in the background, one of the coolest places I've ever seen in my life. Check it out, we have all the Gibraltar license plate GBZ, and they have the European Union flag, which is strange because after Brexit, this place was of course separated from the European Union, but it still does have a connection because I just talked to that Spanish lady back there, she works here, and of course around 10 to 12,000 Spaniards cross the border every single day to come work here. They earn a little bit more money, but they don't have the same rights, social security, for example, as they would in Spain, but it's very interesting to see how people come from such a place that's so poor in Spain to come I'm here work just to earn a little bit more cheddar. It's the classic British phone booth. I didn't even have to go to London to get it and it's open. Oh my god. Let's call someone. Hey Mr. Bald, how's it going? How's it going? You're not in Russia anymore, are you? Dave Legenda, Saluki, Travel Attic Guy. Hey man, I got a proposition for you. The tax rates are so low here, we should open up a YouTube empire and base it out of here. No, not Estonia, it's too cold. Dubai, come on, Dubai sucks. Iberian Peninsula is the best place to live. All right, Mr. Bald, I'll see you here. Bye-bye. Honestly, the infrastructure is way more impressive than what we saw in La Línea de la Concepción. That place is totally abandoned, decrepit, in decay completely. And obviously, this place is one of the most densely populated places in the world. I think the fifth most densely populated with over 32,000 people living in 2.6 square miles. You guys, that's over six kilometers, a little tiny area. I cannot believe it. This place is literally just blowing my mind and we haven't seen any of the most fascinating stuff yet, like the history, like the tax breaks, like the monkeys. There's monkeys here. Well, check out this beautiful map, you guys. If only you could see the topography and the elevation, which is really, really high actually right here. Here we got like the center of the city. We're right around here. We got the port where they have nice yachts where they exchange petrol, which is called bunkering. We'll touch on that later. And we can walk all the way around this and go see the Straits of Gibraltar. And you have a slight Andalusian accent. A Caritano uh, accent. Let, let me tell you one thing. I step across the road and into Spain, and the moment I open my mouth, they know I'm from Jim. We are all Yanitos now. Hold up. What the heck are Yanitos? Well, Yanitos are people from Gibraltar, and they even speak their own vernacular. I mean, basically, this is the most perfect form of Spanish that exists. Not that broken Spanish we try to speak in the States. These guys have a perfect Andalusian accent and speak fluent English with a similar accent to that of England. It's actually quite mind-blowing. Check it out. Bueno, yo te puedo decir, por ejemplo, for example, we call the marbles, we call them mebley. You know marbles that you used to play in the olden days with your fingers? Es que hubo un tiempo que era contra español, cerrada, when we were completely annihilated from Spain. Alimina y Gibraltar y Madeira son los twin cities. This is something that definitely distinguishes the Gibraltarians from mainland Brits because as we know, most Brits don't speak Spanish when they come to Spain. I mean, you just got to go to Benidorm to find out. Wow, look at this. We're entering like the city, the downtown of Gibraltar. We've got some friendly, some friendly Gibraltar chickens. Hey, little buggers, how you doing? <laughs> He's speaking some British gibberish here. Check out this wall. The city's really built into this. We got like a little drawbridge here. Fascinating, fascinating. This was the only way that you could get here in the 18th century because there was over 13 sieges here in the 18th century. And so the only way you could get into the city was this bridge right here 
or by the sea, of course. You can't come to Gibraltar without mentioning the historic rivalry between England and Spain and during the 18th century. Of course, the Spanish attempted to siege Gibraltar several times, but to no avail. And in response, King Felipe V of Spain sent the people to construct these fortifications here. And these are what remain of the historic fortifications, hence the name La Línea de la Concepción or The Line. Now the economic divide between La Línea, Spain and Gibraltar is immense. For example, here unemployment rate is usually above 30% and in some cases youth unemployment rate actually exceeds 80%. So when you have so much poverty like that, of course young people are going to look for other ways to make money. And just across the Straits of Gibraltar is the biggest hash producing country in all of the world, Morocco. So it's no surprise that drug traffickers use these wide, beautiful, Cadiz beaches to smuggle drugs in really high-powered speedboats that elude the authorities, come across the Mediterranean, park on the beach, and smuggle all their hash into Europe. So definitely, this is one of the biggest drug smuggling ports in all of Europe. Suffice to say, the economic disparity between the two places has a lot to do with the way that Spain administers their country, the way they administer taxes, and make it very, very hard to set up a business when in Gibraltar, setting up a business is much more easy. In fact, there's over 60,000 businesses in a territory that has a population of 32,000 people. I mean, that is absolutely mind-blowing. If that's not a tax haven, if that's not a fiscal paradise, I don't know what is. Oh, first look at the Gibraltar city. Look at we have Lord Nelson commemorating one of the best-known military figures associated with the rock. Check it out. It really does not look anything like Spain thus far. I do know that some of the interior neighborhoods might look a little bit like an Andalusian type pueblo, but we'll see. Now, one of the ways that Gibraltar is very distinct from England, of course, is that they live here in the Iberian Peninsula and therefore they do have the Mediterranean Spanish-esque lifestyle where people do eat outside all year round, which is quite awesome. Imagine you're from the UK. You definitely can't get this back in the UK. This is the typical tobacco shop that you see in Spain. It's the same here in Gibraltar. Let's check out the prices though. All right, 25.99 euros for, I think that's a pack of 10. That's so cheap. 25 as well here. Oh my God, it's so cheap. 27 for a 10 pack of American Legend. Wow. They sure want me to buy some cigarettes. The American. Guys, you're at the ATM. Free cash withdrawals, you'll not be charged. Everything in English, you guys. I'm gonna take out 20 pounds to say I finally got some British pounds. Oh my God, look at the money. I've never seen British pounds before. Oh, 10 pounds sterling, madre mia. Or as I say up there, 10 quid. So those 20 pounds are worth 23.38 euros. And so you can use these English pounds here and sometimes you'll get the Gibraltar type money in exchange, but you can't use that Gibraltar currency in the UK and England. So it's quite interesting, right? They have their own currency here, but they also use the English pound. Now what you guys a super offer, six pounds for some nice Old Navy rum, nine euros for a bottle of Smirnoff. Oh my God, these prices are so good compared to what you would get in England. Another similarity we have here between Britain and Gibraltar is that the weather's a bit rainy, a bit dismal now. So it rained all night last night and it honestly was like the first time it rained in this part of well the Iberian Peninsula in like the last eight months and we here we got a little bit of rain just check out how downtown Gibraltar looks it really does not look anything like a Spanish city at all but we'll see as we get into the suburbs so basically the three conclusions I've came up with thus far is that if you're a big smoker an alcoholic and you like to drive your vehicle a lot well this place is the place you want to come to now what does one of the richest economies in the world look like well it's obviously a service-based sector Many of the big earners here are working in the finance services, they're working in the online gambling service, etc. That's because they have a very low corporate tax rate of only around 12%. It was 10% before, but it's actually went up recently. And the people that are running these small businesses here, all these gift shops, all these tobacco stores, are most likely Spanish people or other immigrants, right? It's an economy that really functions really well, and I really don't think that like any poverty or poor people here exist. It has one of the highest GDPs in the world. All right, you guys, we got a Gibraltar in pub. We're watching some FIFA games right here. Oh, we got Super Pac from, Bor Super Pac from Portugal. Let's give it a go. Pint of Super Pac? How much is it? Four pounds? All righty. I'm gonna use my pounds, you guys. Oh my God, John Smith, that's my brother's name. Maybe I have descendants in Gibraltar. Uh, capital of Connecticut. Hartford. Georgia. Atlanta. Texas. Austin. New uh, Mexico. Uh, Santa Fe. California. Sacramento. Washington. Olympia. Minnesota. San Paul. Jeez, you're a real geography whiz. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you Gibraltarian? No, I'm from Morocco, from Casablanca. No way. Yes way. I'm going to Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> but you're speaking like a you're speaking like a, a local Gibraltarian. Well, I've been living here too long, 42 years. So, so the accent. how many Moroccans live here? Or a couple of thousand. Couple thousand. Wisconsin. Madison, we say that. Bloody hell! You know everything. New Hampshire. 
Concord. Jesus Christ. I'll give you a handshake for that one, mate. <laughs> I was a teacher, that's why. Okay, okay. I have to teach the program. I know them all. Okay. It's raining like the real England, so I had to take a break and get a super bock for four quid. Uh, super bock is a Portuguese beer. I haven't had one since I was last in Portugal, so let's give it a go. Mm. Super bock always hits the spot. Finally, a chance to try a real mega English breakfast. We got the baked beans, the black pudding, the tomato, the eggs, the bacon, the toast, the hash brown, and the sausage. Cannot get more English than that. So we got an American with a last name Smith trying an English breakfast in the British, British Overseas Territory of Gibraltar. Wow, I'm really going back in history, guys. Mmm. Baked beans are great. Let's give the bacon a go. Better in the United States, not gonna lie. Let's give the black pudding a try. Mmm. Wow. This stuff is called morcilla in Spanish, but it is so good. 10 out of 10. Let's give the sausage a go. Mmm. Dream come true, you guys. Dream come true. Now, here's the tomato now. Think of it. This place is so small, they cannot cultivate their own crops. Therefore, they do have a lot of food that comes in from the Iberian Peninsula. Specifically, vegetables, meat, everything in between. Let's give the hash browns a go. Mmm. It's so good to have some real hash browns, you guys, because hash browns aren't a thing in Spain. And I was raised on hash browns, you guys. So that's the only thing I ate growing up. Hash browns and eggs all day. Thanks, Dad. It was so good, mate. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you very much. See you guys. Thank, nice talking to you. All righty. Oh, that was nine, nine quid 95. And just like that, all me quit are gone. I'm basically bankrupt in Gibraltar. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to look for some more activities to make some money here. What could there be? Maybe I'll join the illegal tobacco smuggling industry, make some funds, take the easterlies down to the Caribbean, escape. Start a new life down there. What do you guys say? Good idea? This is one of the most interesting and unique places in the world. In fact, you can get married here on short notice in less than 24 hours. And I think there's only one other place in the world where you can do that. That would be Las Vegas. People go there to get married. An interesting fact about this is that actually John Lennon and Sean Connery got married here in Gibraltar. They liked it. I did not know that James Bond literally came here to get married. I mean, this place continues to blow my mind, you guys. And here we have Your Magistrate's Court, which is the Gibraltar court system where all the criminals are tried and prosecuted. Yeah, quite interesting to have their own court system here. I wonder what people are getting prosecuted for in these parts. Check it out. Here we got uh, the bus system here in Gibraltar. I don't think there's that many lines. I don't think the buses run that frequently. And I don't think it's that necessary to take the buses, but nonetheless, they got everything here in Gibraltar. Check it out. I can see the cable car going into the clouds. Actually, I'm kind of glad it's a little bit cloudy misty today. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see Morocco from here, but nonetheless, it just sort of adds to the mysterious vibe because usually this place would be so sunny. But honestly, with these clouds, it's quite beautiful. And if you think of English during the colonial times, you often think of pirates, right? Pirates of the Caribbean, etc. But it's interesting because the Moorish people conquered this territory and after it was captured by Spain and thereafter England, this place faced a lot of raids from Barbary pirates. Now, Barbary pirates are pirates that patrol the Mediterranean Sea from North Africa. And their headquarters were based out of Sala or Sale in Spanish. And I was actually there on a recent video in Morocco's most dangerous city, Sale. So I'm gonna link that video and put it in the description so you guys can see. Where the pirates came here from North Africa and attacked and try to siege this part of the Iberian Peninsula. Wow, check out all these houses here. What a view they would have of the Mediterranean Sea. To the west of here, you guys, is the furthest southern point in the continent of Europe called Tarifa. Now, Tarifa is a very interesting place. It's very windy, has some beautiful beaches. It's touristic, but it's the closest place from the Iberian Peninsula to the coast of Morocco. And I think the distance is only around like 14 kilometers Man, I mean, it's so short, you can literally see Morocco, you can see North Africa from there. Well, we're gonna catch the cable car up there into the unknown, the mysterious, misty mountaintops of the rock El Peñon in Spanish. Hopefully the YouTube gods tell the clouds to get out of the way so we can see these beautiful, magnificent views of the Straits of Gibraltar. So I was gonna take this nice cable car that we have here, and I went and inquired about the prices, and only a single ride up would cost you 38 pounds because they obviously want to incentivize you to do a round trip but what happens is once you're up there you have to pay separately because this isn't a guided tour to see all the most important parts of the rock of gibraltar and as such i'm going to do the taxi guided service which is 40 euros and it brings you around to all the sites in the taxi and it includes your entrance to all the historical sites and they give you a great guided tour so we're going to do the taxi service plus the lady that was working there she was quite nasty with me i didn't like how she treated me so we're not going to take the cable car we're going to go with the guided taxi service so let's go 
be taken to make it like an army base. Is that what it's called? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To control the straits. Yeah. The commerce. Sign the Treaty of Utrecht and Gibraltar become British. They tried to take it later. Yeah. By force, by politics, but yeah. they never succeeded. What you see over there, that's Morocco, where I am from. Yeah, yeah. When I'm in holiday, I swim over. Houses <laughs> <laughs> Mountain and Gibraltar Mountain. That's and the two pillars of Hercules. And what does it represent, the pillars of Hercules? Well, they're saying that Hercules, the one divided them to cross because he was a god. And when he divided the two continental, he put the two pillars, the two mountains. That's a legend. In Greek mythology, the Greeks, they thought this is where the world ended. And the Romans, they thought the world ended up north in Fisterre in Galicia, northwest Iberian Peninsula, Galicia, Spain. Uh, now, apart from the economic sectors of online gambling, finance, banking, real estate, etc., one of the main economic drivers of this amazing place is what's called bunkering. Now, bunkering is what you see all these ships here. They're exchanging petrol. Obviously, there's tax incentive. Fuel is a lot cheaper here. But the other thing that's important is they don't have to dock so they can exchange the petrol right there out in the sea without docking, saving a lot of money, saving money on fuel, saving money on the service. It's quite fascinating to see how the businesses here get around all these tax services and make it such a profitable and prosperous place. Well, I thought we weren't going to be able to see much today, you guys, because it's quite cloudy. But honestly, in the horizon, we can see Morocco we can see Sayuta. It's so beautiful to see how it looks here in the Mediterranean. Normally it would be very sunny, you can see everything perfectly. And just to this way we have the other part of Spain. Tarifa would be that way. And the port city of Algeciras is right there. Three separate countries all within one view. Man, for geography nerds, this is so awesome. I didn't think I was gonna get such cuteness overload in one single day, but here we are, check it out. Just a word of advice, these are wild animals and they have been known to pickpocket, steal, and get aggressive with humans. So yeah, just be careful out there, you guys. Anyway, and just guys, like that, I want to be a father. Uh, yeah. In 1954, Queen Elizabeth came here, rest in peace, on her Commonwealth tour. And what she saw beneath was something so extraordinary. It was the amazing views from the top of the rock. And here we are, we can't see much beneath, so it's not even worth showing. But it's just crazy to think. And I asked the people here, the Gibraltarians, what was the environment like? How did they feel when Queen Elizabeth passed? And they said it was the same. It was very somber. They were mortified, they said. So. I don't know, it's crazy to think that Queen Elizabeth was here. She walked these same steps when she discovered what Gibraltar had to offer. You fella duchies, what do you think? Beautiful, man. Beautiful? They're, they're amazing. Uh, do you want to be a dad now? You want to be a father? Not at the moment, but... Uh... I don't know. <laughs> ah, and that's where the saying in Spanish, que mono, came from. Que mono means how cute, how nice. Funny, I think I just realized that, wow. And legend has it that there's a tunnel that connects the rock underneath the sea to Africa and that the monkeys came in the underneath tunnel has yet to be discovered. But yeah, really they came here from North Africa with the Berber traders and such and they still remain here. In fact, they're the only monkeys in all of continental Europe. I thought the monkeys were gonna bite you. No, you're good. Monkeys business, what are you doing here? What are you doing on the car? Get off the car. Careful man, he'll, he'll steal your phone, be careful. Unless it's a Samsung. There's even a popular saying here that as long as the monkeys remain on the rock, the rock will remain British. Oh my god, check it out. Speaking of legends, we're now in St. Michael's Cave, which was long believed to be a bottomless cave that led to the subterranean tunnel that connected Europe to North Africa. Additionally, this cave was used as a makeshift hospital during World War II, as well as providing more ventilation to the rest of the vast network of tunnels that we will see in a few minutes. Wow, it's actually wet in here, you guys, because water, of course, drips down and forms the stalagmites. Oh, it's misty, you guys. We're literally in a different microclimate up here. It's actually quite cold can't see a damn thing but we're upwards of 400 meters up here you guys i wish we could see the views other than clouds but bueno it's lo que hay. it's what it, it is what it is the last time i was in a misty place like this was when i was hiking the island of gran canaria near one of the volcanoes in the top of the island man that was a fun video to film i'll put that in the description i got caught in a volcanic storm are you guys uh, scared of heights yes. that's why you never been up here even though you live here eh? Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's why I'm glad I can't see anything. Oh, yeah, you guys, if you could see and feel, oh my God, this is straight drop down. If I drop my camera, this video would never be published. So I'm not going to drop my camera, but whew, it does give you a little bit of a heebie-jeebies, oof, wobbles. And imagine being the first people who set foot here, or at least the first person who gave the name of Gibraltar, the Berber king, Tariq. That's where the name Gibraltar came from. He came here in the year 711 from the Maghreb region, North Africa. He conquered the Iberian Peninsula and of course, 
the Iberian Peninsula before it was Spain. It was ruled by the Moorish people. And so there's tons of Moorish history tied into not only the Spanish history, but also the British history in combination with the Italians, the French, the Portuguese, all the North African nations, all the traders that went throughout the Mediterranean Sea. And that's why the British people, they knew that here was important to control the Straits of Gibraltar. There was so much commerce that came through here up to half of the world's commerce. And still to this day, tons of commerce comes through here. And so that's why the British Empire was so successful because they didn't focus on what they had in England. They focused on what they could get elsewhere and it became the biggest empire that ever existed. It's Wonderful, Th thank you so much. You're welcome, pleasure. Have um, a nice day here. Once you come out later, you take the way down. Okay. Once you go down, you will see the city under the siege exhibition. That's talking about the time there was a siege here by the French and Spanish. Thank you so much. Have a nice time, enjoy your holiday. Well, you guys, I can't recommend this tour enough. Uh, I, I'm so glad I used the taxi service instead of the cable car because not only does he tell you history the whole way, he brings you, he makes sure you're taken care of. And after you finish, he brings you back down. But I chose to walk, so I paid him right now. This is absolutely mind blowing for me to think about because at the same time of the American Revolutionary War, the British were obviously fighting for their colonies in the Americas and here as well in Gibraltar, they were fighting the Spanish during the Great Siege, a great siege that lasted over three years. And of course the idea of a siege is to cut the British army off from provisions, from getting reinforcements, from getting ammunition, etc. And so you can only imagine the conditions that the British soldiers lived in. They had to constantly blow out these tunnels and they had lack of food, lack of water, lack of everything and yet somehow they survived and and that's why Gibraltar is still Gibraltar today. And this is what they would have seen, the Spanish army being over there trying to get in. And of course, that's why La Línea de la Concepción exists because that's the line of the troops, etc. And there we see Spain, here we see Gibraltar. Absolutely fascinating stuff. And this is what remains of the British Empire, right? This is the last colony in Europe that still exists to this day. Just to give you guys an idea of the extent of these tunnels, they were up to 34 miles long, which is 55 kilometers. And just think, the territory, the size of Gibraltar is only 2.6 square miles or 6.7 square kilometers. We're gonna see the landing at one of the most dangerous airports in the world. Oh my God, you guys are in for a treat. This rarely happens. Touchdown. Those British blokes are some good pilots, I tell you. See you guys later. See ah, so that's another thing you can do here in Gibraltar is watch, watch the British Airlines land. There's only a few airlines that come here. British Airlines and EasyJet, I think. So this is basically how the locals are living here in Gibraltar. I mean, basically there's anywhere space to put housing is where you gotta live because really, it's such a small territory. Like I said earlier, only around 2.6 square miles. And so you can imagine with such a small area and a high population density, the cost of living is gonna be rather high. Of course, goods and everything like that are very cheap. Where there's little space, you have very few choices to live. In fact, some of these properties here near the waterfront are selling for upwards of five or six million pounds. So yeah, it's not a very cheap place to live. That's why there are these tax incentives. I think I'm gonna end the video here, you guys, because the sun's just about to set. I'm about to lose a lot of light. So what can we conclude about Gibraltar? Well, obviously this place is an extremely fascinating place to visit. It's certainly a geopolitical anomaly. It's a strange border situation. And you know, on one hand, I do sympathize with the Spanish people because this is the last colony that exists in Europe. But on the other hand, the local people from here have voted almost unanimously more than one time to remain part of Great Britain, to remain part of Gibraltar. And you know, let's be honest, if this place did become Spanish, the economy would go into complete ruins compared to what it is now. I would certainly suggest visiting here if you are in the Iberian Peninsula. It's not the most beautiful place in the Iberian Peninsula, but it's pretty much up there with some of the most beautiful places. So yeah, you guys. So as far as where I'm going next, it's sort of a surprise. I'll leave it up in the air. You guys can take a wild guess, but let's just say you can see the place from here in Gibraltar. So yeah, guys, I hope you liked that video about Gibraltar and I've only said Gibraltar like 300 times in this video. <laughs> so until the next video, you guys, Adventure Elliot, peacing out. Hasta luego.